So one of the things that this diet does is it builds an in what we call OJAS norovetic system. And in the Chinese system, we call it Jing, okay? J-I-N-G. It's the deep primordial reserve. And a lot of people these days have used up their OJAS from a variety of things, just living in the, uh, in the world, so to speak. So this, with the right foods, can build the OJAS. Next slide, please. And what depletes it, we can see overworking, overplaying, not getting enough sleep is a big one. Drug use de deranges what we call prana, the kind of uh, breath life force, tejas, the, the, the fire that we have. So what's really good for building the ojas is omega-3s, and that's the long chain omega-3s, particularly DHA, and we'll be talking about that later. Uh, but you can get that from yellow algae. You don't need to get it from fish, which is really uh, EPA primarily. Plant-based protein is very good. Uh, bee pollen, although some people feel have a vegan that may not be considered vegan. Uh, Blue-green algae, chlorella, spirulina, these are high, high quality proteins. Coconut oil, hemp seeds, avocado, nut and seed milks. So we need a certain amount of fat and I'll be discussing that a little bit later, but these are really key. And obviously this is ojas, okay? Now the leafy greens build the tejas, the fire, and they have the detoxing part. What are good herbs? Oh, we're not gonna spend a lot of time on herbs is the shatavari and ginseng, maca. These all build life force. They're all longevity herbs, rhodiola, goji berries, astragalus, rishi, schizandra, and gynostimnia. They're all excellent herbs that really take your life force. When I talked about the biophoton energy, these are the key herbs that do that. Next slide, please. So what about the vegan live food diet? One of the things we've observed is that in the diet today, the germ cell vitality is going lower and lower. And it's actually at a point where we may not be able to reproduce. Now, many things are going on, and, and I want to kind of separate it from the whole uh, injection vaccine thing that we're going on, because that specifically goes against the germ cell. I wanted to stay with the diet here. Um, and pesticides, herbicides, definitely diminish germ cell function. Now, why is that important in this discussion? Because Meat, fish, chicken, dairy, all concentrate the pesticides and herbicides. So around 95%, 96% of all the pesticides, herbicides in our food are higher in the food chain. Meat, fish, chicken, dairy. That's why it's important. So as a uh, live food vegan, you're eating lower on the food chain. It makes perfect sense. So we preserve our germ cell from all the heavy pesticide and herbicide production. And then it allows for healthy reproduction. It may be if things go as they are, I'm, I'm restraining myself from talking about the vaccine. I'm just gonna say, um, I find that uh, not everybody, but a lot of vegans uh, know this is not so good, plus all the, the the 78 different animal DNAs that are in it and so forth and so on. So by avoiding uh, the injection, you are gonna have more reproductive viability. So just think about it that way. I'm trying not to make a political statement so much as a health statement. Be, and so your vi viability is important. I, I won't go into all of it, but also it's not just the sperm, but it's also the ability of the uh, fetus to uh, connect to the placenta. All this is in the, in the research already, it's out there. So 
Um, these are really important. So eat low in the food chain, you're gonna have much more germ cells, sperm and ova viability. Without that, you can't really reproduce. And uh, again, I'm gonna say in the men, the sperm counts have dropped dramatically. They're like more than less than 50% of what they used to be. I mean, they're at 50% or less than what it used to be 25 years ago. Almost at the point where there isn't really reproduction. I'd love someone to do a study of vegan uh, men versus men in general to see the difference in sperm. I think that would be very illuminating. Um, and maybe in time we can support that, but it would be a really, really positive thing. It's just simple. Sperm count for vegans, you know, a thousand vegans, sperm count for a thousand men out at large. Okay. You'd have to do vaccinated and unvaccinated to, to kind of, so you get clear results because of other things. Obviously, not obviously, a live food vegan diet uh, preserves, but really activates personal health and vitality, activates it, improves it. Now we can go into a long talk about it, but we're gonna say that it, this kind of approach, you're gonna get 3.5 times less breast cancer and 3.6 times less prostate cancer, uh, at least half uh, the amount of cancer in general. You're gonna get, uh, in terms of diabetes, a lot of food, a meat eating, a person who's eating meat has 35 to 50% more type two diabetes. Uh, the rates of cancer, again, range two to three times more. Rates of heart disease, maybe 30% uh, less if you're not eating meat. So it goes, uh, the health ramifications are huge and, uh, and uh, I'm just gonna take it just to that point. Uh, it does make a huge difference and people actually live longer on a vegan diet. And I'm gonna say are more healthy. Now, feeds the hungry. If the whole world were vegan, we'd be able to feed the world seven times over. Think about that. We're worried about food shortages. And, and a part of my work in Africa is we're helping people more convert to a vegan way of, of uh, dietary way um, because we can feed everybody doing that. And that's of great value when they're trying to push this starvation uh, people can grow their food and give them control over their life in a different way. Obviously, it protects against animal cruelty because you're not killing the animals. And they're not stuck in feedlots and production uh, grow, you know, situations where the cows are, are nothing more than a product. Okay. And it preserves the ecology. And uh, it protects against global warming, actually. It preserves the ecology, it preserves the water. Uh, a vegan saves a, one swimming pool, Olympic-sized swimming pool of water each year. It preserves the land. It uh, purifies the air. It just goes on and on. I'm not going to give you all the details because it's important. Okay, maintains and protects the biocomputer mind. I was just looking at the note there. A live food, raw food, what's the difference? Live food is freshly picked after 24 hours to maybe 48 hours, depending on it, it begins to lose its life force value. So if it's around for more than three days, it's really, uh, it doesn't have that powerful life force value. Uh, so raw is after three days. That's maybe an easy way of, of defining that. Okay, I've already mentioned that it protects the mind and that's extremely important. Next slide, please. Okay, and that brings us to the consciousness of sovereignty. 
I haven't actually taken a survey, but my experience has been that the people who are maintaining their personal and let's say political sovereignty, there's a higher percentage of vegans and live fooders doing that. Uh, that's a speculation that'd be a great study to see how that is. Uh, and when you're doing the live food, the yama and the yamas with 10 speakings are naturally fulfilled. Ahimsa, no violence, okay? And then inner peace. And then I mentioned about nadis and koshas. Nadis are the channels that you saw. Koshas are the layers of the mind, the five layers of the mind. They all are protected and more purified on a live food vegan diet. So that's why it's a diet that's most associated with spirituality. It's very straightforward. <laughs>